A historic increase of migrants trying to cross the Mexican border into the U.S. continues. More than 5,000 families arrived in March, an increase of more than 175 percent from the previous month. And dozens of people have died over the last six months. This includes children who are trying to cross the Rio Grande, a Mexican border town hotel that used to attract the wealthy and the elite. You see it there. It's now turned into a refuge for those trying to escape poverty, violence and corruption. 60 Minutes Plus correspondent Enrique Acevedo joins us live now to discuss. Good morning. How are you, Enrique? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. How do immigrants arrive at the Santa Rosa Hotel to start with? I think it's a constant flow of migrants. Its proximity to the border makes it a destination for these families that are returned from the U.S. after crossing illegally into the country, or also for families who are coming from Central American countries like Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador and are waiting at the hotel until either the border reopens. We know the border is closed now under a rule called Title 42, which allows the CDC to close the U.S. border during a, a pandemic like the one that we're experiencing. And some of those migrants are, are hoping that the border will reopen soon so they, they can try to uh, claim asylum in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And at the hotel, you've been speaking to many of these families coming from Central America, places like Honduras, as you just said. So why did they decide to leave their country? It's a mix of factors, right? We've talked a lot about this historic push factors like bad governance and violence, the lack of economic opportunity. But there's also new elements at play, like this information campaigns, the impact the pandemic is having in those countries, and of course, climate change. Just last year, Honduras suffered two major hurricanes within a couple of weeks. Um, the push factors are not the same in each country, but I think the common denominator there is search for hope, the idea that they can provide a better lives for, for their families. And obviously, we're hearing the word surge repeatedly at the border right now. Is the situation you see now similar to what we've seen in the past, or is it much different? I think that's a great question, because sometimes we are um, missing nuance from, from our debate about immigration. And it is similar to what we've seen in the recent past, 2014, 2016, and 2019. It's now expanded through three different administrations. And I think uh, President Biden wants to end that cycle. But some of his critics say that the policies he's implemented so far are contributing to what many call a humanitarian emergency at the border on both sides of the U.S.-Mexico border. Now, Enrique, here in San Diego, you know, over a thousand children and teens are staying at the convention center. We also know there's a tent city in Tijuana where several families are staying and they're all hoping to cross into the United States uh, seeking asylum. Talk about the border community there. How are they dealing with this? This is so important because everyone talks about the border, but just the people who live there, I think, understand the, the situation and, and have uh, really been... Uh, uh, compassionate and, and, and shown empathy towards, towards what's happening through this uh, humanitarian emergency. I think that the local communities are struggling. They're overwhelmed by uh, the arrival of, of so many families and unaccompanied minors. Like you say, the overwhelming majority of those allowed entry into the United States are uh, unaccompanied minors, 19,000 during the month of March. Um, and I think they're just overwhelmed and they would like to First of all, have a, a voice in, in our national debate about immigration, um, a saying in a way, and then also more resources to deal with this emergency. Enrique, thank you so much for your time. I want to let people know at home that they can watch Enrique's full report right now on 60 Minutes Plus. It's streaming exclusively on the new uh, Viacom CBS app, Paramount Plus. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.